Hi everyone, welcome to my review of the Campfire Audio Trifecta Astral Plane Edition. This IM, if you have not ever come across the Trifectas, have been well received. Uh, people love it. But there is a segment of the community that do not like it at all. So I'll talk a bit about that, but this is mostly going to be a review and I'll talk about the way I'll break this review down is I'll discuss the unboxing. It's already unboxed, so what you see now it's not going to be how this came in, uh, but I'll, I'll talk you through how it came in and how it reached me. So, you know, the unboxing is going to be a part of the video discussion today. I'll also talk about the uh, the dealer that hooked me up with this, Headamp, a big shout out to Headamp. Uh, they did provide me with a discount in exchange for review and have in no way asked me to mention them or, you know, take them through the take you guys through the website. But I do want to because I've had a very good experience working with them. And I've known Justin, Justin Wilson for a bit of time now. So I'll talk about all that. I'll show you the graph of the trifecta, the sample size calculators open here because I was just sort of debating with an audio file about how the Harman sample is just not what you need and how this graph is problematic. I've talked about this before, but I'll talk, take you to the sample size calculator to make my point a bit. And in the course of the upcoming videos, I'll have more on methodology of Harmon and all that. But anyways, to jump right in, guys, this comes in at three three seven five dollars So this would have been better if this was three 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 zero dollars $3,333, but no, it's three three seven five. There is a whole three sort of uh, trifecta thing going on. This does have three drivers, three dynamic drivers, and very few IMs in the market today have three dynamic drivers. These are called ADLCs, uh, so diamond-like carbon drivers. They're full dynamic drivers, so these are 10 mm dynamic drivers, none of the micro driver stuff. And they're all positioned in this sort of nice triangular sort of a way so that they all fire like one driver. So each of these is sort of like 10 mm in size. So essentially, you're getting the air from air meaning the air that reaches your ears and vibrates your eardrums from three 10 mm drivers i.e working in unison so the resultant effect is that of a 30 mm dynamic driver so you're in a sense you're getting a lot of air pushed into your eardrums so you have a very headphone like effect for this i am much more so than any other i am i've ever come across this shell is made of nylon, but that keeps its weight down. Some of you will criticize, hey, why can't I see the seam here? Why not give me titanium? But of course, this does have the effect of making this very light. This is perhaps the lightest and most comfortable flagship I am that I use, with the exception of the Dita Perpetua. So that's worth keeping in mind. It does keep the weight down. It does have a beautiful look to it, and a lot of people who like it also like its aesthetics. People like seeing the Inards and, you know, the intricate circuitry and the three drivers. It's just very beautiful, guys. So I'm pairing this not with the stock cable, although the stock cable is perfectly functional. And I'll show you guys the stock cable in a bit. I'm pairing this with an aftermarket SEMA cable. It's quite easy to drive, I would say. Uh, uh, not as easy to drive as other Campfire IMs, but still quite easy nonetheless. Its impedance is rated at about 6 ohms. It's between 6 to 7 ohms and it's, you know, very sensitive as well. And I'll take you guys through all that. But before I do, let me just quickly show you the unboxing. So this is the outer packaging. It's, it's a nice visual. And if you see the sun coming in and the sort of blue clouds, this has a very heavenly vibe to it. Uh, uh, this hand that is <laughs> just nicely done here. But anyway, so that's the outer packaging. And uh, this just shows you how the box opens and the fact that this lid stays or can stay open like this. Um, a lot of pieces of wood. Some of you will complain about the quality of the wood. Some of you will say, hey, why give me wood? Why not shave off this whole wooden stuff, get rid of all this stuff so that, you know, you can charge me a lower price point. And then if they gave you something more minimal, a lot of you would say, hey, I want something more you know, maximum, I want something more elaborate in my unboxing because I'm paying $3,000. I mean, I'm from the camp that I don't mind a nice unboxing. It is what it is. But then I throw away the all the stuff and, you know, I, I never see the boxes when I'm in my day-to-day -day life. So unboxing doesn't matter to me, but it does matter to a lot of you, hence this effort. Three cables, guys. So this whole three trifecta theme is ongoing between three drivers, the price of 3375 
when initially the trifecta came out it was limited to 333 units so there's that as well yeah so i have uh, two cables here tangled up but they're not meant to tangle up because they're fairly you know supple as is pretty evident from this so yeah i mean i'm not going to take you through everything you have a 4.4 mm jack cable by the way the cable is nice it's an spc and you have this four cores running in parallel so it's a flat wire it's a flat wire but it's fairly manageable nonetheless and you know it's it's a nice sounding cable guys and it's a nicely done cable in terms of aesthetics with this you know gold accents and all going on but i've decided to go aftermarket i mean a lot of you would like the flat cable a lot, a lot of you might not but i think sonically it's fine and honestly i found it very manageable so you see it's not like it's janky and it's tangling it's just that it caught the ear hooks three cables um this of course is terminated in a 2.5 and of course you have the 3.5 you have a an assortment of ear tips a cleaning tool and all that right the foam pins can help some of you guys with the treble because the treble here has been somewhat divisive and of course you have this hand which i have no use of but some people will you know plug it in like this and sort of suspend their trifecta cable from here but then you know i'm not one of them i find this a bit too zany so that so it's going to stay inside the box and the most useful part of the unbo unboxing i thought was this um, flap like uh, um, case to give you which is magnetic and i feel like it's useful you can you know store your pens and stationery inside if you know if you wanted to it's a lovely blue color and so that's it guys this is that's the unboxing the wood is again of not of the highest quality but i'm nitpicking i mean i'm not never gonna have this around until i ever decide to sell it which is unlikely because this i am honestly has changed the hobby for me because i used to have about 15 ims not too long ago about two months ago with the with the intention of selling you know a lot of these so i kept selling until i had like 10 and then the trifecta came and now i have four because trifecta is it is taking up a lot of my listening time and i love it but before i move on and talk about sound guys i just i do want to take you through the head amp website so head amp is of course an online a dealer of a whole bunch of brands and they're famous because Justin Wilson behind this is not just your stereotypical dealer and he's not just an audiophile which he is he's also an engineer and he also makes some of the best amplifiers on the planet and the reason I know this is because I used to be into e-stats and I used to be into planar headphones and dynamic driver headphones full-size over-ear headphones and I have long looked up to his amps this is his latest creation which i i haven't heard yet to be honest it's called the grand cayman and uh it's it's an outstanding amp it's a beautiful looking amp so you know i'll just open it up in a next you know sort of a new tab so you can get a better uh, more clear picture of it it's just absolutely stunning and a lot of people are swearing by this as the end game estat amp on the planet they have a whole bunch of stuff guys they even have the cfa3 which is a which is which is an insane kevin kevin gilmore design the cfa3 is this is such a beautiful design guys so i used to own one of these guys so until justin wilson of headam decided to make the cfa3 you could get it from a diy kind of a builder based out of uh, a scandinavian country his name his head by name is duke and he does a decent job of building these amps but in some cases, these amps have been unstable for people. Justin Wilson, of course, is a master class. So if you do have to buy this amp, I highly recommend you buy it from him because the level of professional professionalism in finishing and in the stability of the circuit you'll get from Justin Wilson, I doubt you'll get from anyone else. And just look at how stunning this sort of industrial piece of art is. Like, I'm not exactly sure how he designs his face plates, but they're always very impressive. This partic particular amp design actually makes me want to re-enter the headphone part, part of the hobby, which I won't because I have these neck issues that are resolving, but I definitely want to stay away from headphones. But this is an amazing amp, guys. This has 50 watts of power. It drives the Susvara and the TC to appreciable levels. And, and uh, a lot of people swear by the CFA3 for the dynamic impact it can bring about in any one of your amplifier, in any one of your headphones. These are not for IMs, guys, and I'm, I'm sorry for the interregnum, for the, you know, pause in the review, but I do want to take you to Head, Head, Head Amp's website very quickly. So he carries a whole lot of brands, 
And I just want to quickly show you other Headamp stuff he has. So in addition to the Grand Cayman and the CFA3, uh, 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 these are very expensive, by the way. So when you see $500 written here, it's just a deposit for the pre-order. I mean, um, this is going to be in excess of $12,000 from what I know. And he also has a very famous, famed Blue Hawaii electrostatic amp. And I used to own his GSX amps. These are more suitable for headphones and IMs, perhaps the GSX Mini more than anything else. And um, so this is the Mini. I used to own this. It's a beautiful amp. It's got a fair amount of power, 40 watts and 50 ohms. And he's also got portable amps. So that's basically it, guys. He's a phenomenal person to work with, Justin Wilson of Headamp. And, and check him out. Check him out. Check out Headamp. So that's it for Headamp, guys. And I do, I do, I will, I do plan to have this tablet PC around. The other thing I want to read out is I do want to sort of point you to HeadFi's Facebook page, especially the showcase page of the trifecta. So you can read a lot of the written impressions written about it. This one paragraph summarizes this review better than anything else could have. So I do want to read this out. It is from Jeff Rockwell's review. Jeff Rockwell is a very important part of the community, I think. He has, he runs this thread called water cooler as you can see there's this notification for the water cooler thread and those of you starting out or those of you who have been in this hobby for a bit of time i highly encourage you to check out the water cooler thread a big shout out to jeff rockwell who goes by rockwell 75 who initiated this thread who manages it great guy and i've traded with him and all that uh and this is his review of the trifecta from what i understand trifecta is his favorite headphone or i am and his encouragement and his sort of passion for the trifecta did influence my purchase of it. So in that way, I'm grateful. And this is written review. He quotes this gentleman, JS27, and his impressions goes like this. The trifecta sounds like the best possible audio endpoint you could dream in 1993. It tells its story with the very analog dynamic driver organic pre-2010 R2R hallmarks. It will sound woolly and bleedy to those that worship at the altar of Our Lady of Balance Armature. It does not reverberate from the silent inky void where planars ferry their magnetic souls. It is a wondrous, enveloping, swirling, resolving cloud of 2022 level special effects on top of the simple, warm, organic heart of the dynamic driver sound. This is a dream from Hi-Fi Future as dared to be imagined by 1979. Absolutely stunning impressions and quotations that I find completely on point as, you know, a summary for what the trifecta sounds like. And before getting into graphs and all that, it does sound exactly like this person describes. It is very, very analog. It's DD all the way through. It pushes a whole lot of air. So it's very dynamic, punchy. It is far more dynamic than any other IM that I've heard. And that includes Empire Ears. That includes four audio IMs. I do own the XE6. And I'll drop some comparisons to the XE6 as some of you have been requesting. The XE6 is right here. Uh, uh, I've decided to sell it. So, you know, for after buying this. So that gives you a sense of how amazing the trifecta is. However, the trifecta is perhaps a little more divisive in some ways. So I'll cover that as well. But before I talk about all that and the graph, <clears throat> maybe just to quickly take you guys through the technical performance of this IM, because there's been some debate about its technical performance as well. So <clears throat> it's $3,375. It's not as resolving as other IMs in its price class, but that doesn't mean much to me because at this point of resolution, I do think it can become more subjective. So the XE6 here will be a bit more resolving uh, uh, but then this will do note weight and this will do sort of like the whole density of the sonic performance in such a way that might not get equated with resolution. But it is still very critical, like the note weight as, you know, as a part of the information you're getting from the tracks. So in that sense, you still, so you, you do get a lot of information that you might not get from the XE6. This will outclass the XE6 for the entire density of the presentation, for the note weight of the presentation. And for that, I think perhaps a lot of you might want to rethink how you approach the definition of resolution when you encounter an IM like this, because it is a very unique IM, guys. There's nothing like this on the market. <clears throat> so, but resolution-wise, that said, I do think there are more resolving IMs out there. In one of my reviews, I said the Symphonium Helios is more resolving, and I stand by that. The Helios is 
insane for its price of thousand dollars a lot of the symphonium audio ims are insane for what you get in terms of bank for the buck and for resolution so it's not the most resulting however what it lacks in resolution it more than makes up for the other parameters of technical performance it is way more dynamic than any other im that i've come across i find this to be more dynamic than the abyss ab 1266 phi tc so in dynamism and speed it's like class leading legendary in timbre it's class leading legendary there is some the occasional metallicness in the treble but i do think you can tip roll and cable roll and source roll and fix that i'll talk about sources as well so and sound stage wise it is like the mother of all sound stages because it scales with higher quality sources and you know i have a super high quality source perhaps the highest quality source on the planet for ims the sony dmp z1 or z1 that i will be dropping impressions and reviews of so stay tuned for that subscribe if you have not so on this unit i mean the trifecta is positively speaker like i know you're not going to buy this a lot of you might not buy this but it is speaker like because images are very very tall the images are just just so wide that i can't describe to you honestly in a youtube video i i do want to have to get you to hear it on the dmp z1 to understand how wide this can get but even on my sony wm1 zm2 dap i see even on as if it were a cheap dap but of course it's perhaps one of the most expensive daps out there but yeah, the Sony WM1 ZM2 is a very famous DAP for soundstage, and even on the WM1 ZM2, this is very wide. It's it's just a very wide sounding set. The soundstage is incredibly wide. It stretches far out of your listening sort of you know your head, your you know, and um, the soundstage width is phenomenal. The imaging is just masterclass. You get depth as well. So what you lack in resolution with these IMs, you get you you more than make up for in sound stage and imaging, in timbre, in in dynamism and speed. So technically, it is a highly impressive set. If resolution is not all that you index for, but even for resolution, it is the way I would put it is it's sufficiently resolving, guys. Okay, now to talk about tonality. So this is the graph that I pulled up from headphones.com website. Headphones.com is another very impressive retailer. I've done business with them in the past. I've interacted with people who are behind it, and I find them to be fantastic. And their latest member, Mr. Cameron Oatley, Golden Sound, is someone I love. He's wonderful. I consider him a friend. I, I highly value his, his, his um, impressions. So that's that. All that being said, I'm not, I, I love measurements. But I don't think the Harman target is, is a useful measurement. So in that, I strongly defer with Andrew on because <clears throat> I think what happens here with the Harman target curve is that it's based on a sample size of 200. And you can use one of these online sample size calculators. This is calculator.net to figure out, you know, what is. So if you assume the Petfi community to be 30,000 strong, and this is just a random number based on the number of users who use the Petfi Facebook thread. And you use a population proportion of 50%, this sort of a rule of thumb, a margin of error of 3%, which is a minimum margin of error that's acceptable, and a confidence level of 95%, which again is somewhat conservative, and you calculate a sample size. To find <clears throat> a target curve, you need a sample of 1,000 people. Harmon had a sample of 200, and I don't want to get too deep into this. I will in a separate video. So you have a sample size of 200 uh, that Harmon used to come up with this graph, and what you need is a sample size of 1,000, so five times what Harman used, which is why this graph is just, you know, not super accurate, I think. And I, I don't even think it speaks for, you know, the community. I do think it's safe, and I do think uh, what they did was they stumbled on a graph that sounds interesting on first listen. So this is a safe graph. So far from being neutral, I would just call it safe because for this to be neutral, I, I personally would drop the base level a bit upper mids a bit in proportion to the base and I would have more treble energy, especially air. In, in, instead, you have this graph that has an inordinate amount of sub bass and, and can even sound a bit dry because it doesn't have enough mid bass and lower mids. And then it has a lot of pin again, much more than I think sounds natural and then no treble. And, and I think so this is a problematic graph, guys. On the other hand, if you go to a trifecta, you get this. So what I want to make you understand, guys, like your noggin is not the same as 
the noggin, the, you know, the, of course, the makeshift head on these measurement rigs. So the size of your head, your ear canals, the anatomy, the specific design of your ear canals and your entire outer ear, middle ear, inner ear will have a huge effect in how you perceive these treble peaks. That's number one. The number, the second thing is, and I'll get into the tonality discussion. The second thing is I've seen other graphs on head fi, and I'll try to find them that don't look like this. They look so different, you know, that they almost look like two different IMs. The third thing is, and this is connected to the first thing, your ear anatomy will determine how you hear these peaks because for some of you, these peaks will not be in the lower mid treble. They'll be far more stretched out and they'll be further out. For me, I, I'm more sensitive to the five kilohertz, six kilohertz peaks than the eight kilohertz peak. And I'm more sensitive to the eight kilohertz peak than I'm to the 10 kilohertz peak. So if your ear anatomy makes you more susceptible to higher peaks, and at the same time, you end up hearing these peaks further down the frequency spectrum, which is what I think is happening with me and the trifecta and a lot of people who love it, then I think this won't bother you as much. And then the tips have a huge effect. So these are the supplied stock tips, whiteboard tips. Using the other tips, I was getting more mud. I was getting a sound more similar to this and I was getting more treble sibilance. But with these open, more whiteboard tips, I'm not getting as much mud as this graph suggests. And I'm getting a lot more clarity in the lower mids and I'm getting less sibilance. So, and finally, I mean, there could be a couple of resonance going on here on seven kilohertz guys, because this I am does not sound like this graph. It does not to me, to some of you it might, but it does not to me. So that's it for the graph. But in general, guys, the way I would describe the sound, because I don't want to, I don't want the graph to color how I listen to this which I do think off happen often, even with four reviewers with the greatest intent. Uh, um, so the base here is enormous. The enormity of the base is not something I can describe in just one video. I think it's enormous. It's, it's like a rifle shot. It's thunderous. It sounds like, you know, it sounds like thunder guys. It's, it's just thunderous. It's textured. You feel it because of 30 millimeters of air being pushed into your eardrums. It's cavernous. It's it's balanced between sub bass and mid bass. The sub bass will never leave you wanting. Again, it's not lean in the bass, so you get mid bass, and it's a good balance. Unlike the for audio I am, which also has phenomenal bass, but I would say that with this, unless you tip roll and use symbio tips, you get a bit more mid bass and sub bass. With our friend here. <clears throat> It's slightly more sub bass as it should be, but you get a good balance of sub bass and mid bass. Mids are fine, guys. It sounds analog. It sounds, it's not recessed, but it's not offensively shouty like I think a lot of Harmon tuned IMs can be. Harmon tuned IMs sort of catch you off guard in that you like them at first blush. If you're reviewing them and you have them for two months, I think you'll be fine with them. But I think you bore of the Harmon tuned IMs over time. Um, this is a very colorful tuning. You do get a lot more treble energy, which I think is essential to offset the amount of bass you get. But there's no bass bleed I perceive with these tips into, <clears throat> I'm sorry, there's no bass bleed you perceive into the mid range. And then the upper mids are, are fine in the sense that the vocal, the vocalist and the distance you perceive of the vocalist from yourself when listening to these, you know, a variety of tracks is just fine. The vocalist does not sound like he or she is too far out in the mix or too, you know, forward in the mix. It just sounds perfect for me. The treble is lively, is energetic. What it does do, do, however, is that on tracks that are not well recorded, you will occasionally get some sharpness. I would not call it sibilance with this sort of a setup, uh, uh, but on tracks that are well mastered, it's you, you're going to be in for the best rider for your life. So this I am the way I would describe this is it's just a joyous ride. It's a hell of a ride incredible ride the bass the treble i love both the mid-range i enjoy i like i like listening to a lot of vocal bass tracks with this as well and not just metal and rock which i adore so it's an incredible i am guys but i highly suggest that you spend time tip rolling cable rolling with this 
These are SEMA Acoustics cables that are wonderful acoustic match, aesthetic match, and an acoustic match with these IMs. I will drop a link to these cables for you. And, and these tips, I think, are essential for them. But then other tips have been found for these IMs. That I'll, and I'll leave a link to a review by Guy Lerner, GLR on HeadFi, another guy I like a lot on HeadFi. And his review was fantastic, his written review. So leave a link to his review. It's a different take on the Trifecta. He also loves it and admires it. But, you know, perhaps I love it more. Uh, again, it's subjective. And my take on it is uh, my, my take on how much each person loves it is, of course, subjective. He might will love this more than I do. But that's the impression I got since... This is my number one IM right now. Uh, but I, I definitely want to leave a link to his review so you get a sense of how he has tip rolled and cable rolled because I find his review to be useful for a lot of people. Okay, this mothership DAP is the $8,500 Sony DMP Z1. And I'll not review this, but I do think that Sony DAP synergized really well with the trifecta. And I've switched it on, but I'm not going to take you through what, you know, uh, presets I use with this or what tracks I've played with this, but that's for later. I'll switch it on because I'm going to listen to music after I'm done with this review. <laughs> but yeah, the Sony W1 ZM2 was phenomenal with this, guys. So all in all, what I would say is that the trifecta can be polarizing if you're used to safe tunings. You can't be faint of heart if you're approaching the trifecta. You have to be somewhat adventurous in your preferences for tunings it does not sound like not in not in not in its entirety to this graph it doesn't have this obnoxious crazy treble peak i would say it's far more recessed and you know a bit higher up in the sort of treble frequencies for me uh but like i said your ear anatomy will have an effect on whether you hear a seven kilohertz peak or a nine kilohertz peak the Xenon 6 is a phenomenal IM, and for most people, I dare say this might be a better IM than the Trifecta because it's more resolving. A lot of people equate technical performance and bang for the buck with resolution, so it's more resolving. It has beautiful gold-plated IMs. It's it's a heavy, monstrous sort of uh, bass again, but then you can tune the bass with its you know modules, with its cable and its tips, and it's a highly tunable set. And in a lot of people... Stable, I see this and this. So a lot of people have wanted me to compare them. So the quick comparison is they're both bassy sets. This is a little more sub-bass. This is more mid-bass oriented, but you can tweak and tune the mid-bass with tips. The vocals, the mid-range, the guitars are great on both. You get a little more treble bite <clears throat> with this, especially in the higher treble. Slightly less treble bite or treble energy in the air frequencies with this. Uh, on the other hand, this may have a little more mid-treble than this, which I think is a nice way to complement the bass frequencies here uh this is slightly warmer in that sense and staging wise i would pick pick the trifecta resolution wise like i said the xe6 holds its own timbre wise i would pick the trifecta speed and dynamics wise they're both phenomenal but i would pick the trifecta ultimately so both ex excellent i am slightly more expensive at three thousand nine hundred dollars so that's what it is guys in terms of an ab so that's it guys a phenomenal i am it's changed the hobby for me it might not for you, but I would highly urge you to give it a listen. And a final shout out to Justin Wilson of HeadAmp for hooking me up with this and doing so very, very fast. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you have not and stay tuned for my next one. Bye-bye.